Summertime and the cream of Belarus's youth are putting their best foot forward. And everyone's smiling. Also on display, but at a very different exhibition, two teenagers in a courthouse in the capital Minsk. 16-year-old Vadim and his 19-year-old friend Alexei stand accused of one of the nation's most serious crimes. They are considered to be so dangerous that eight armed guards and a Rottweiler surround their cage. Their crime is not murder, narcotics or terrorism, it's graffiti. They're accused of writing rude remarks about the president. In the streets and the courts of Belarus, everyone marches to the beat of one man, President Alexander Lukashenko. The Belarus president is not a man who's comfortable with criticism. During his four years in office, he has gained near dictatorial powers and used them to crush dissent. At least that's what his critics say. Lukashenko insists it's just Western propaganda. У нас не меньше имеют прав наши граждане, чем в России и в развитых странах Запада, в том числе Соединенных Штатов Америки, Великобритании, Германии, Франции. Это абсолютно надуманный вопрос. Да, есть определенные нюансы, так же как и в любой другой стране. Поэтому, ну что из этого, из мухи раздувать слона, как у нас русские говорят. But in a radio interview with German media, broadcast later in a documentary film, Lukashenko gave a quite different response. He named his role model as Adolf Hitler. Lukashenko's vision for his republic's future borrows heavily from the Soviet Union as well as Nazi Germany. Coming here is like going back in time. There are very few Western cars or commercial advertising. The shops sell Soviet-era produce and police are never far away. It's ordered, neat and utterly oppressive. Yet for a brief time there was democracy. Belarus declared itself free of the Soviet Union seven years ago, an event now celebrated in this annual parade. Lukashenko even gained power through the ballot box. A former collective farm boss, he ran for office on a platform of fighting corruption. But once he was president, his main priority became fighting reform. To the horror of Democrats, he rolled back personal liberties and reimposed state control. Now, even independent celebrations resemble Soviet rallies marching soldiers, columns of tanks, even rocket launchers. And that hallmark of Soviet industrial achievement, the tractor. Lukashenko insists he's not a communist. In fact, he claims not to follow any ideology. But Belarus's old guard communists have come to accept him as one of their own. And Lukashenko looks likely to stay in power for as long as he wants. Two years ago, he held a referendum to strip the opposition-led parliament of any real power. European Union observers claimed the referendum was rigged, but there was no avenue to challenge it. Courts, state media and the entire government came under the president's direct control along with police and the KGB.
To find the opposition these days, you have to hunt out a small private apartment. Andre Sanikov was Lukashenko's deputy foreign minister until he resigned in protest against his increasing authoritarianism. He now fears Lukashenko has become mentally unbalanced. Yes, many steps he is taking could be explained only from uh, the point of view of psychiatry. So you think he's mad? I think he, uh, at least for, for the president, uh, to behave like this, uh, it's very strange. Andrei's apartment houses a small pro-democracy group called Charter 97. It's a David versus Goliath contest, and so far, Goliath is winning. He is changing people, uh, because I think the most dangerous uh, factor uh, that now is active in Belarus is that people discovered, rediscovered the fears of Soviet times. And people have good reason to be afraid. This is what they risk if they take part in demonstrations. There is little pretense that police are merely keeping order. This is summary punishment for daring to protest. An exposed back or a bare head is treated as a provocation and dealt with accordingly. Вот это как раз один из вариантов, один из самых жестоких моментов, когда вот давили, подавили народные выступления. Вот здесь вот как раз на этих кадрах это уникальные кадры. Здесь бьют японского студента, который приехал в Беларусь изучать белорусский язык. Юрий Хашевацкий has made a career of studying the president and his police. He's one of the country's foremost film directors, and in Lukashenko, he's found the perfect vehicle for comedy. Вот он берет, держит в руках карандаш, ну, к примеру, да, и уверен, вот если он разожмет руку, этот карандаш полетит вверх. Представьте себе, вот это символ экономики нашей. Вот он совершенно точно знает, что все должно быть вверх. Он отпускает руку, а, а все падает вниз. Представьте себе, какой ужас он испытывает, раз он уверен, что должно быть вверх, а оно падает вниз. И у него сразу же появляется э, абсолютная подозрительность. Кто виноват в этом? Кто виноват? Виновата кто? Ну, оппозиция, безусловно. Да? Интеллигенция, конечно же, да? Юрий chronicled the adventures of Lukashenko in a bitingly satirical documentary called An Ordinary President. Beginning with the Hitler remarks, the film attacked Lukashenko with the most vicious tool known to dissidents, ridicule. Из парламента, как из логового врага, Александр Григорьевич уходил твердо. Вот где пригодилась строевая подготовка. Спина была прикрыта, а это главное. Not surprisingly, the film was promptly banned in Belarus, but it was televised to great acclaim in Western Europe. Two days later, some visitors wiped the smile off Yuri's face. Открываю дверь, получаю по голове мгновенно. То есть, как бы без раздумий. Ну и вкинули в прихожую, там в мастерской, где я работал. Ну и дальше я уже смутно помню, что к чему. Bashed, but unabashed, Yuri is now directing a sequel. Но почему продолжать? Почему мы собираемся с моими друзьями, вот в том числе с Володей Андроновым и с Леней Медленным, почему мы собираемся продолжать? Потому что интересно. Поймите, это очень интересный персонаж для документального кино. Я вот сейчас был в Соединенных Штатах, и я сказал, если вы этому актеру не дадите Оскара за лучшую мужскую роль, у нас будут осложнения. Будет международный скандал. Разрешите нам предлагать тоста. Оскар или не Оскар, президент Лукашенко очень способен создать свой скандал. Last June, in a move even Hollywood couldn't dream up, he led perhaps the strangest attack on foreign dignitaries in diplomatic history. He ordered his police to lock a score of ambassadors out of their homes, claiming they needed new plumbing. I can tell you we already get the next threat. This morning we got already a threat from the government. 
In protest, the US ambassador, the Japanese ambassador and every European Union ambassador left the country. Even on the ordinary people level, I, would, I cannot imagine a Belarusian throwing out his guests from his, even from his home. So I'm very much ashamed and embarrassed that it's happening in Belarus. But uh, I, I, saw it, I saw it coming because um, he, from time to time he blames Western ambassadors, US ambassador, of conspiring against him, of trying to plot against him. When you come back? Soon. <laughs> As yet, there's no sign of when or if the ambassadors will return. No. Lukashenko's growth was achieved by pumping massive subsidies into unprofitable state industries. Last March, the currency began an inevitable freefall, the ruble trading as low as 60,000 to the dollar. <laughs> Now, even the president's erstwhile supporters are turning against him. Four years ago, Tamara Danilovic, like most collective farm workers, voted for Lukashenko, a man they believed would understand their problems. Tamara works 10 hours a day for the equivalent of 60 US dollars a month. It's not enough to even pay for food. So at the end of each shift, Tamara starts her real work in her backyard. She milks her own cow, feeds her pigs and chickens and grows her own vegetables. Without this, her four children and one grandchild would go hungry. Хлеб, сахар, соль. What President Lukashenko thinks the proletariat need is perhaps his defining act of madness. He's proposing reuniting Belarus with Russia, the biggest economic basket case of all. He's already opened the border, an event portrayed in Yuri's film in less than reverential terms. Все, границы больше нет. Ходи туда-сюда. Таможни, кстати, тоже нет. Так что вози туда-сюда. Belarusian nationalists have been stunned by Lukashenko's attempt to give away their nascent independence. Lukashenko has even banned nationalist symbols. It's now a criminal offence to display the red and white Belarus flag. Lukashenko has reinstated the old Soviet flag instead. Many suspect the 43-year-old president has some method in his madness. He uh, tries to... Uh, show uh, uh, in practice what, what could be achieved uh, uh, in terms of going back to the totalitarian past. But he thinks that this model would be required also by, by Russia and by Ukraine, and that's why he sees himself not only as leader of Belarus, but leader of the Slavic world, or let's say leader of re restored Soviet Union. President of Russia as well as Belarus. Oh, yeah. After a four-year crackdown, there are now few Belarusians game enough to try to stop him. On Independence Day, the only sign of protest was a handful of Charter 97 members calling for freedom for political prisoners. The police didn't even bother arresting them. After a half-hearted attempt to push away the cameras, they let some die-hard communists do their business for them. 
Питера, не трогай. Хай бы стыдно, хай постыдятся. A KGB cameraman filmed the protesters. They'll almost certainly be dealt with later. Our two graffiti terrorists, Vadim and Alexei, were eventually dealt with after spending six months in pre-trial detention. Як вона була принижена і чому вона була принижена мене мною, потлумачено не було. Було був такий відказ на кшталт. Ось на суді все буде вже визначено до кінця. А поки ти будеш просто сидіти. Alexei was sentenced to a further 18 months in a labor camp. The dim being just 16 was given a suspended sentence, but he's not off the hook. Police have warned his mother Yadviga that he'll be on his way to join Alexei if he is seen on the streets protesting. Right up until their conviction, a few brave souls continued to demonstrate. They got nowhere. The end of the Soviet Union was supposed to end mindless oppression. But in Belarus, Stalin's ghost is rising.